Hello everybody, welcome to my video, A Poor Man Makes a Lock Shop. Uh, let's get started with uh, my lock collection I've been making. So, let's start with the guy that started it all. I decided to give a new hobby a go, which was metal detecting. And there was a school built in 1908 that they tore down. And so I swept the area, and I came across this guy. Of course, it didn't have a key, it had a rusty old... Uh, shackle on it. Uh, it apparently got rototilled a couple times. You can see the little shiny spots. But I remember that I used to locksmith and I used to impression keys and make keys and all that stuff. So uh, I decided I couldn't find a, a warded pick that would fit this thing. So I made this guy. It's out of an old uh, Dremel wrench. And it's the the, the go-to thing I had quick, easy, fit in there, so I decided to smoke impression a little pick. I couldn't make a key, because I can't find a blank yet, but uh, yeah, it works pretty good. Open it up here, there you go. So yeah, that's this is the lock that got me back into locksmithing, and actually lock sport too. So yeah, we'll put that aside and keep going. Next one is uh, Master. It's a warded lock. Uh, it's a little old, 60s, 70s, something like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It pricks, picks pretty easily. The next one is a uh, little master, cute little guy, made in China. Oh well, a lot of their stuff is to their specifications, of course. These guys here, they're cute too. Little three pinners. They're uh, Samsonites. So yeah, they're just neat to have. Tiny's cool. No name storage lock. Uh, discus copy. Uh, pretty easy pick. Made in China. Get a Master 40 here. This guy, it gave me a little problems in the beginning. Just because uh, the warding there, I couldn't go straight up from the bottom. But I found the... Uh, the 15,000s goes right in there and, and hits all them high lows for me. And also one of the W rakes works pretty good on these guys. Here's a US Forest Service lock. Kind of disappointed. You see there, it's made in Taiwan. It's got security pins, spool pins, everything, but uh, I'm sure you could use a zip tie to open this guy up. But you know, government locks are pretty cool to collect. Just like uh, this master here. I found this metal detecting as well. Somebody cut it off, left it there. Uh, it's a DG. This one was really hard to pick just because it was so weather-worn and the springs were so loose that, yeah, it gave me a little bit of a problem at first. But as I started practicing again, uh, I developed the skills and sensitivity and whatnot. Here's a little Master 55, no key. I found the uh, the new warded picks they got these days opens it just as well. But I'd like to find a key on eBay and try to make a key for it. Cause everything's cooler with keys. Little chalet. Uh, I don't know where it's made. Probably China, cause uh, it's a pretty easy pick. A couple of barge and shutter locks these are uh, truck stop locks you get them at a, a truck stop found this guy on the ground uh, it's got keys everything here's another shutter lock the protector probably made in China as well it's got a neat Yale keyway though so that's a uh, that's different to get into still pretty easy Master lock, 7300. It's a seven pin tubular lock. Pretty heavy duty. I like this guy. It's probably uh, the beefiest lock I got. Another barge and truck stop lock. Master 6125. Pretty weather worn. Uh, yeah, like Bosnian Bill said, uh, it's self-picking because 
it tells you exactly what it wants to do with the uh, counter rotation and whatnot. So yeah, not too special here. Little sliding glass door wafer lock. Uh, pretty junk, but you know, if you can't get inside the house to pick it, well, it might work pretty good. Fortress, little Chinese. And something I got from the Goodwill. They often have locks from time to time. Project Safe Gun Lock. Made in China. So yeah, that's it for my locks. Uh, let's go on to other stuff. I got my pan of ice here. Uh, you can see I customized the bottom. I put a weighted bottom on it. I got this from an old tower lamp, the living room tower lamps you used to get. The halogen ones that would burn your house down. So that thing ended up burning itself up. But I took the bottom off and mounted my pan of ice to it. So now you can be pretty rough with the thing. And it doesn't uh, move around on you. See, I secured it with some uh, good old brass toilet bolts. Uh, some pins. You see, uh, they call these vintage now on, on eBay. Quick set, 400 line. Uh, I dumped it over a couple times. I'm still in the process of cleaning it out. But it's still got some good stuff in there. Got the Schlage. Schlage keying kit. It's still kicking around. It's a cool little small kit. Uh, I'm saving my money for a, a lab wedge. So we'll see what happens with that. This here is a cam. Cam service lock kit, almost brand new. Don't run into too many cam locks anymore. Take a look at, uh, don't laugh guys, but this is what I've been using. This is my pin tray. Uh, some closed cell foam I just cut out with a razor knife. Because like I said, this is a poor man's uh, lock shop build. So you got my shrink wrap, this is cool. Chicago Electric, eight feet, so you can get the the full tang sheet sheet rack. Thousand grit sandpaper. When I get new picks, uh, these these are my followers. This one's a socket, some off brand. Uh, Eleven thirty seconds. It works good for Schlage. Uh, I think Quick Set too. This was an old screwdriver that I got. Uh, I think it says Shucks on there. Shucks, Cragen, whatever. I think it's O'Reilly now. But yeah, makes a pretty good follower for American locks. Here's a little Schlage Dexter. Uh, yeah, it's a little sticky, so that's why it's up here. I'm going to work on it a little bit. Another Schlage here. Uh, got my my little uh, Smitty Hunter tools. Uh, the glare, you can't see it too well, but... Yeah, for getting into some of the padlocks to rekey those, get the core out. There's some cheap tweezers, reverse action tweezers. I put a little groove in there so I can get to the pins, but I think I'm going to save up and get some uh, Sparrows tweezers. Here's my old impressioning file, old Swiss. It's a uh, fine teeth on it, so it works really well for impressioning. I'd say this is uh, probably the best file. Here is, you know, I've been needing a cylinder core removal tool for the quick set. And for two bucks, that's not a bad price, but six dollars shipping. That's just crazy. So I, I made my own here out of some kind of, well, it's a real soft metal. Uh, I'm not sure what it was, some kind of bracket. But yeah, it works just as well. Got a little flat file. For the, you know, shaving of burrs and uh, that unorthodox thing when uh, you got a pin that you just can't can't quite uh, figure out. Yeah, so sometimes you gotta shave some things. That's the pin and kit. Here's some uh, things I've been I've been collecting, building my uh, lockpick kit, HPC Deluxe. Oop. There you go. I've already done a review on the uh, 
the leather case here from Sparrows. This is the leather tuxedo. It's pretty good. Threw in a bunch of, of flat bars and took out the Z wrenches because they just bulged out a little too much. Scored this for my birthday. My wife got me this, the Sparrows double tap gun. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I haven't got to get any Loctite yet because the screws do back out. But I did put a little washer in here. I took a hose grommet washer and uh, I put that in there so this guy doesn't back out on you all the time. So that works pretty good. You can go through a few locks without having to retighten it. So yeah, the double tap gun, that's pretty neat. And here we go. Give you an idea of kind of when I got started. Uh, give or take five, ten years. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty good book. Informative. Exploded lock views, all that. So yeah. Hope you liked the video. Uh, for those of you who watched, thank you. For those of you who didn't, you didn't see anything. And uh, be well and behave.